Um, I'm going to call to order the Finance and Operations Committee meeting of the Nashua Board of Education at 7.35 p.m. Uh, we are at Nashua High North, and uh, I'm going to call the roll call. Um, Mr. Mosher? I'm here. Uh, Ms. Porter? Here. I'm Mr. Garino. Uh, we have a quorum. Mr. Mosher is joining us by telephone. Are you, um, you by yourself tonight, Mr. Mosher? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, thank you. As he recuperates, thank you. Um, we also have Mrs. Oden, uh, President of the Board of Education, and we have Mr. Donovan uh, joining us too. And later on, hopefully, we'll have Mr. Mr. Smith. So we have a number of items on our agenda, and um, those we're going to be taking some of these out of order. I'm going to ask Mr. Donovan um, which one he'd like to uh, take. Uh, I'm going to ask to suspend the rules and take them out of order from the agenda, mm -hmm. as Mr. Donovan can uh, tell us which one he can cover at this time. Okay, we can, we can start with the first one and then wait for Mr. Smith. We'll s wait for two and three until Mr. Smith shows up. Okay. I Sounds can speak to them, but if he comes, he can s probably speak to them a little bit better than I can. Okay, great. Okay, so the first item, Brentwood update. Um, just wanted to give everybody an update uh, on, on the program and the building specifically as Everyone knows we moved the Brentwood program from the location up in Merrimack near the high school uh, to 410 Amherst Street, right over by the Bertucci's. Um, and we, taking a, a um, program that, taking a building that was typically used for business and turn it in an educational setting proved to be a little bit more time consuming. I'm not sure more difficult per se, but more time consuming than we thought. We had to go through a number of permitting processes that um, just, they just tend to take more time than one would expect they would, but they are what they are. So at this point, I just uh, sort of wrote this note to update people. Um, the electrical and the plumbing work, that's all completed. Um, the interior carpentry is done. Um, the computer network, at the old Brentwood, we were using their network, the Brentwood network, so it was a little bit cheaper, but the, the, the staff and students weren't able to get on our network unless it was sort of, let, it, it was kind of like a dial-up kind of situation. So now we purchased the network equipment. We can move it from there if we end up moving. Um, so think of it as, a, as a, a portable asset, but they're now on the network so they have the same access to everything um, and the same speed of use that all the other schools have. Um, the wire, the one, one thing left to do, and that should be done uh, probably next week, I think, is the wireless access points. So right now they need to plug in their computers into the wall like anybody else would but the wireless access, access point should be completed soon. So then they'll be able to use the, uh, the, the laptops right at their desks. Um, we added them to our phone system. So they have the same types of phones on the same phone system as everyone else does. Um, the, we have in fact in our hands now the temporary certificate of occupancy. Um, as you probably heard, the third day of school, that Thursday, we were forced to cancel it because we didn't have that piece of paper in hand. Um, we had had a number of meetings. We thought we were in good enough shape, but as it turned out, um, the, the uh, city and state required us to get a couple more things done, which we did that Thursday and Friday morning. And so when school opened back up on the Tuesday, which was what, September 3rd or whatever. Um, so we have the, we have the permit in place. Um, the, it's certainly a safe building. The fire alarm is working. We're still working with the state fire marshal, mostly at this point in time regarding, um, any, any more issues with the fire alarm. 
since it's an educational facility, we're required to have so many uh, fire, um, that's what I'm looking for, fire drills each year. So every school has to do that. A business building doesn't have to have any. I mean, many do, but you don't have to. There's no law. So what we're working with the landlord on is if we're going to have these, if we have one or two a year, they're probably fine, but we're required to have more than that, and I don't think the rest of the people in the building want to be running out every month for a fire alarm, fire drill. So we're working to try to uh, take the, the drill would only work on our floor for the one facility, so there's still some work to be done there. Um, and another thing is it's, it's important to this program that they have a stove. They teach life skills. The stove's important. Um, we've worked with the local fire marshal on that. We think we have, the stove is not in place yet, but it probably will be soon. Um, we're probably going to have to move it from one room to another. Uh, but if we do that, I think we'll probably save a lot of money on the requirements that we're going to need for a stove. Um, because a stove in an educational facility, if you go by the letter of the law, can be really expensive to do. But we, we started speaking to them and said, we have stoves in the high schools, and we don't have them all vented you know, to the outside and everything. They're, it's done in a more simple process. So, so far, I think we're going to be OK with that, but the stove probably won't be in. That probably, that'll probably be the last thing that we do, and uh, the director is fine with that. And the other thing we're working on on the permitting side is the, the bathroom and the ADA requirements of the bathroom. There's no students or faculty in there that require those ADA requirements, but we have put up the required um, uh, bars along the side of the bathroom. So if, in fact, some visitor comes, we're OK. We may end up, there is a shower room. We may end up taking that shower room and making it an ADA compliant bathroom if, if need be. We'll have to, that's, that would be a bit more expensive. We're hoping not have to do that right away. We'll, we'll see how it all works out. Um, so if you take a look on the back page of this, you, you can see the, the layout of the school. Um, and as you are aware, you approved the security system for this. Um, on Monday night, so we'll be putting the purchase order together for that uh, probably tomorrow and get that started. So the, the front where the vestibule is, that will be the main entrance for everybody um, to get into the school. Over on the top left, you see the west lobby. If the middle of the building is right there near the west lobby, so a lot of people may try to come in. They'll go into the building that way. But we'll probably put a little piece of signage, say, to enter Brentwood, go back around front. Um, and then you can see that the, all the rooms are defined as far as staff rooms and social studies and conference rooms. And, and in the middle, um, towards the back, you see the cafeteria. And then in the, you see the kitchen and the kitchen storage. That's where we're going to, th I think the plans of, the, of the, the school would like to put it in that kitchen room, but I think for, we're going to end up putting it in the kitchen storage room. So it's, it's not a big, way, big deal either way. It's easier to open that up and put a little door in than it is to deal with the, the, fire, the fire issues that, that may occur if we kept it in that first room. So um, other than that, the program's been up and running. I haven't heard a thing in the last couple of weeks, so that's usually a good sign. Uh, no complaints. Um, and to be honest with you, I think they now have a much better building um, versus what they had. They had a little more space in the other uh, facility, but the other facility needed a lot of work. Um, so now we're in, we're in good shape for a three-year period, and then hopefully we'll you know, work on trying to get a uh, city-owned, school-owned building at some point. But um, I think all in all, we're in, we're in pretty good shape at Brentwood, despite that one Thursday bump. Any questions on this? Or? Thank you very much, Mr. Donovan. Um, Mr. Moshe, do you have any questions or comments? No, I think that uh, handled very well. I uh, 
I know with the st uh, stove and venting was we had that problem with the uh, the other uh, facility that we had on uh, Amherst Street that was uh, uh, up by uh, Building 19. Uh, that was a, a question too with the uh, the stove and venting. But uh, we overcame that, and we got uh, everything done. Uh, even though we had to uh, uh, bring the uh, food up by uh, by by van, so everything looks good. Great, thank you. Anyone else have any comments or questions? No. Um, we don't need any action on this. This is just an update, correct? It's just an update, informational. I just okay. wanted to make sure that, uh, especially since we had to skip that day, that everyone knew that now mm -hmm. we're we're back in right. shape. Thank you very much the, for, for that update, Mr. Donovan, um, keeping us informed. Um, our next, I'm going to move on to school LED light conversion, and I know that Mr. Smith had prepared a some some information, so he's not here. He might have gotten a little confused because we were supposed to meet yesterday. I'm not sure. No, I but, spoke uh, to him today. Oh, he said okay. he'd be here tonight. My guess is oh, okay. he's stuck in the traffic. Oh, okay. So maybe there's some traffic out there. Yeah. yeah, I think if we just skip two and three, we can do four through seven, and then okay. if he doesn't show up, I can. We'll go back. We'll come back yeah, to we'll them. Yeah, we'll come back to them. Okay, great. All right. <clears throat> All right. So we can skip to, uh, unless anyone has any objections, we're going to skip to uh, item four on our agenda, which is quarterly credit card update. Mr. Donovan. Okay. So as part of. When Mr. Ryder was on the board, um, uh -huh. <laughs> Mr. Mosier remembers well. Very well. <laughs> um, he put through, we made a few changes to policies, and there was, at the time, there was an issue with some credit cards. I think it might have been in Wilton. I'm not sure, but there was some spending on credit cards that probably shouldn't have been done. Um, so just... The city and the school district don't have many credit cards at all. We have two credit cards in the district, one's in my name, one's in Paul Calabria, who's my assistant's name. Um, we keep them in the safe. We only use them for business. I won't st put it in my wallet and forget and use it by mistake. That way, um, same with him. We don't... We. We put everything through the approval process in the accounting system, except for a few things. And this, this, this will give you a list for the last seven months, actually, of what we've used our credit cards for. As you can see, the total spent uh, year to date, calendar year to date, is 17,971. And if you take a look, most of the items, there's two areas that we spend most all of that money. One is on conferences and seminars. Um, and obviously, if you're going to take a plane flight or book a hotel room, you need a credit card. You can't can't do that with cash. Um, the and you take when you take a look, you'll see January and May were the two sort of large ones. So I took a look to see what was there. Um, in January, uh, the 21st Century Group um, took a. A conference. It was called the Foundations Conference, but it was, I think, about six or seven of the 21st century staff went down for that conference. Um, and then in May, um, there was the, a lot of that is the, uh, there's a clerical conference each year run by the state and the union group, and um, that was in May, so that's what most of that $3,500 was. The line item below that you can see is advertising, um, and we do a lot of, we use the credit card for a lot of the advertising because once again, that's, that's become another expense that you typically have to use a credit card for. They, that's pretty much how the process works these days if you're going to put, put an ad in a, um, a paper or on any sort of online um, usage like Indeed or one of those websites. So if you put those two together, that's that's about fifteen thousand of the seventeen thousand. The rest of the items, um, the other items that you see every month, the sort of the dues and memberships, that's at SurveyMonkey. 
that's that cost of that. We use that throughout the district. It's $45 a month, and you have to use a credit card. And then other than that, there's just a few other items that, that pop up um, that require a credit card, but I think there's, what, three or four of them. There's not too many. So uh, that is the credit card update. Thank you very much. Um, any comments or questions, Ms. Mrs. Oden? Uh, thank you, Mr. Garino. I have one question. 21st Century, is that, is that a grant? Yes, it is. Is, oh, do we get reimbursed for the conference and seminars for the 21st Century, or does the district pick that up? No, we'll get reimbursed okay. through the grant. This is just that it was okay. used, the credit card was used. Used for that. Okay, yes. thank you. Mr. Mosher, do you have any questions or comments? No, I think Mr. Ryder and, uh, and I, we, we set this up originally. It uh, has worked very well. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, uh, Mr. Smith has joined us. Thank you. Uh, I know there was a lot of traffic out there. Uh, I also went to the wrong building, sorry. Oh, that, that's quite all right. <laughs> Old habits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... We, we were carrying on, we're soldiering on. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, we, we've knocked off two items on the agenda, and I'm gonna go back to item number two, which is school LED light conversion, since Mr. Smith has joined us. And um, you can have the floor, Mr. Smith. Thank you, so you're aware that we've done a, a number of schools uh, last year or so uh, to convert from whatever lighting they had into LED, which, uh, over time saves us an awful lot of money. Uh, most recently, with Bicentennial was completed. Before that, we did Fairgrounds Middle School and Dr. Crisp. Um, so this is the agreement that you really haven't seen up to this point, but talk to Dan about it, and we should, uh, thought you should see them. Um, this basically establishes, it puts us in the queue for energy wear for the, for, to, to do the conversion. We won't have a, a final contract until Eversource approves funding. So this is all subject to funding. Uh, they asked me to sign it, uh, which I did, if you go to the fourth page. Um, but you notice I put a little asterisk there, it said subject to final approval by the Board of Ed. And uh, they came back to me and said, can we have the Board of Ed approve it? So I said, yeah, I, we probably can. Um, but even your approval is gonna be subject to Eversource providing the funding, uh, as long as everybody understands that. So these would be for Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable. I'd actually held off on doing these schools for a while uh, because of uh, the construction queue. At one point we thought we'd be doing these two, two schools next. And that, and that is, uh, they've both been since overtaken by First Mount Pleasant where we did some work there and then uh, Elm Street is at the forefront. So these are probably four or five, six years down the road as far as getting to renovations and all, all subject to the city's funding as well. So, uh, and both schools have issues with the current fixtures. We're having trouble finding lenses for the lights uh, at a reasonable price. Um, so it just made sense to move forward at this point. Eversource has indicated that uh, the funding set aside already for both of these schools, one in next April of 2019. Uh, that's a Birch Hill, then Maine Dunstable will be December 2019. And they've said that before, but then as the year, their year goes on, uh, we've actually been moving up in the queue. So it's very possible that both of these will be done sooner than those dates. Um, and you can see from the uh, Energy Wares documentation that the total cost uh, for Maine Dunstable is a little over $212,000 and Birch Hill is $192,000. And do you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Smith. Are we expecting to save some money on the uh, reduced uh, electricity for these lights? Yes, um, the, next, the next part of this is when, when Eversource comes up with the, the funding for this. We don't actually pay this do dollar amount out. We pay Eversource back with the savings we get from our electric bill. So 
typically it's been what, Sean, 60 months? Yeah, something? 60 months on average, yeah. Yeah. Six zero. So even though you see these numbers, you see, for example, you'll see the 212, then it has the rebate amount of 43,000. So my guess is it's the net of those two numbers. They will do all the work. They will then pay themselves back through our savings. And, and as I've said, we've done this a number of times. It works out great. We don't have to come up with the money up front. And then at the end of the 60 months or 48 months, whatever the case may be, um, we'll accrue those savings. So mm -hmm. um, that'll, be, that'll be a good thing going, going forward. Very good. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Um, so, um, you, you actually answered my question about funding. Um, so you're looking for us to approve this, uh, approve these contracts. We're not going to actually going to put a dollar amount in, uh, because, we, you know, if we say approve the contract for $212, 400, 212,482, we're really not expending that money. So you just want so so in in our motion we could say move to approve the contracts for LED conversion for Maine Dunstable School. We don't have to put a, a money amount in because we're actually paying them the rebate as as Mr. Donovan said. Does, right. Does, I, does that I, make sense? It does. I, I just would suggest maybe uh, adding on to that subject to final approval by Eversource for funding. Okay. okay. Okay, and we have how many schools? We have Maine Dunstable. What was that, Ms. Porter? And we have... It's for Birch, Birch Hill. Hill and Maine Dunstable. Yeah. Okay, so, so maybe we can do it all in one motion. Maine Dunstable for Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I am going to uh, move to approve contracts for LED conversion for Maine... Uh, for Birch Hill School and Maine Dunstable Elementary School, subject to final approval by Eversource funding. Second. And seconded by Ms. Porter. Okay. Um, on the motion, uh, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion carries three to zero. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, next on the agenda, we have uh, Nashua High School North paving study. Um, Mr. Mr. Smith? Yes, yeah, so we, we approached uh, the public works, uh, uh, the engineering office, um, to do some work actually the last two years at North High School. And this year they uh, decided their approach, the best approach would be to hire a consultant to come in and do an assessment of the pavement at this school. Um, so in your package, you should sh see a, a site plan looking like this, hopefully in color. Um, if not, I can describe to you uh, what the different colors would mean. So a good majority of it, uh, they have something called a three inch mill and overlay. So what happens there is they reclaim the top three inches of pavement. Uh, you've, you've probably seen it on the highways. It's kind of a striated, you know, grooved look. Um, so they reclaim it and then uh, they put down a similar amount of, of pavement on top of that. So it's brand new pavement. Um, that's what the overlay is. So that is uh, basically the entry road uh, from uh, the, all the way up to the uh, cul de not the cul-de-sac, but the roundabout. Um, most of the, if not all the parking lots, uh, they're looking to do a, a crack repair at this point. And uh, the loops, the same sort of thing, and put in a sealer. Um, then there's a, the next thing I want to point out to you is a spreadsheet that looks like this. And 
they actually proposed a five-year program. I explained to them that we tend not to get a lot of money uh, on, a, on an annual basis, but if a project like this we could perhaps uh, spread over time would be easier for us to, to attack. So th this shows the, the this is the plan year, that's uh, year one, year two, year three. They had proposed that we actually start year one this summer, but I just I decided it'd be better for us to hold off. Um, and as we go forward with our deferred maintenance plan and the capital improvement plan this fall, we can incorporate this. So I'm really providing this more uh, for your information. It's, it's kind of a heads up of coming attractions. Um, but I would suggest that we incorporate this uh, in our capital plan. And uh, even these numbers, the annual numbers are still pretty high. At, concerning our deferred maintenance, we get 100,000 a year, give or take. So uh, this would go on our capital request. Um, so any questions at this point? Ms. Porter? So when did you say it would start? Year one would be this fall that we're in? Or it, was, it was, we were looking at this summer actually to do the uh, crack repair and, and sealing, because mm -hmm. uh, that's fairly easy, fairly quick. But even that was gonna be $258,000. We, we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we did a, set aside a, a small amount in our deferred maintenance, but uh, it just seemed wiser just to hold off. Uh, you know, it's, Okay. There are some places out there that are getting a little sketchy, but nothing dangerous at this point. Okay. So it would be next year, it would be year number one. Next year. Thank you. So in fall of next year? Well, next, well, well summer. Summer. Oh, okay. Mr. Moshe, do you have any uh, questions or comments? Uh, no, I was just uh, looking over the uh, product that uh, is going to be uh, put down on the, uh, the roadway, the uh, Genite. And uh, I've seen where this is used in other uh, installations before, and seems to uh, work very well. Uh, I look at the map uh, that uh, I have before me, and uh, I see it's quite uh, extensive. How come we had let it uh, go so long before we uh, attacked this uh, pavement? Because I, I know I've been driving over it for the past 12 years. Yes. Um, this, um, did, did you say, Mr. Smith, that this, uh, this assessment was done by our DPW, the city? They did the PCI, the Pavement Condition Index? Uh, well, their consultant did. Which was oh, their consultant. They had a Stantec consultant. Stantec put the spreadsheet okay. together. Okay. Uh, yes. 12 years is, um, yeah, 12, 12 years is a long time. This is the time now to get to it is 12 years shouldn't let it go any longer. Um, uh, I also the unit the uh, unit cost is square yards, and so you have to convert the area to square yards and then multiply it times unit cost. That's how they came up with these. If anybody's figuring out how they get these dollars, you dollars can now here. Move to your third block class. Thank you. Um. Okay, and uh, anybody else have any questions or, or, or comments? Uh, actually, Mr. Mr. Mosher didn't get his question answered, but this is a private road, right? This road belongs to the, to the school department? Well, actually, the road that starts, um, you see the housing development on the left-hand side, mm -hmm. our portion of that road starts at that intersection. So really the, the, the top piece, the, what's, uh, there's a term there that says entrance road on top of it. That's the city's responsibility. And when we take this to the Capital Improvement Committee, I'll point that out to them. Uh, it basically, it's going to be city money, you know, assuming they bond this or however they pay for it. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, we're all one big city, right? Yeah. The, because um, I, I did go online uh, you can you can go online to New Hampshire Department of Transportation, and they have an interactive map. So their map said that actually, it's a private. It's it's not class. If if it's a if it's a town road, it's a class five road, and none of this is class five. So I think their I think our responsibility actually begins 
a few hundred a few hundred feet from the roundabout actually so that's that's the information that I got so this Sahegan Lane is a private private uh, drive and Titan Way the whole thing is a private all the way up to the cul-de-sac so you, you can go online New Hampshire Department just Google New Hampshire Department of Transportation interactive map you can get you can get a map and if, assuming that their information is correct, because sometimes maps are, are not. It says that the, this is a private road. But it is a city anyways. It's, 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 it's basically the, um, uh, the school department owns the, owns the road and the, the city, it's part of the city, as you said. Um, but now would be the time, I would imagine, to, to fill the cracks and fix the road so it doesn't get any worse for future yeah for the future. Exactly. and the one time it's not okay chew it up again yeah yep thank you um ms uh mrs odin yes i have a question for mr smith when they get to the uh parking lots is there any way they can paint the edges yellow it is very tough at night with the lighting here to see where you are going, and uh, I just think it would be a lot safer if they could do that. I don't know the cost of it, but so you're talking about the curb. Yes, yeah. the curbing that that is out there. I know it's hard to see when we go out at night, especially if it's raining. Um, I, I would think so. It, it, it shouldn't be that much of a cost. I, maybe I might suggest go to white instead of yellow because yellow tends to be fire lane color. Okay. But uh, white certainly show up probably even better than yellow at nighttime. Okay. Yeah, that's just got a good point there. The, the fog lines on that road uh, should be uh, painted white. I have a follow up, Mister. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I I walk down here occasionally in good weather, and the cars go pretty fast. I think the speed limit is twenty or twenty five, or it could be even lower. I know it's a very low limit. Cars tend to fly down here. What would speed bumps do? We actually have a couple of speed bumps. <laughs> uh, so where are we? So on this side <clears throat> of the lot, there are, there are two speed bumps, I believe, on this side. I don't recall if there's one on, on the other side, on the automotive side. But they're fairly minimal speed bumps. I mean, it's just, if I mind my truck, I don't even slow down. It's, it's, well, and so. they're not in a high traffic area. I'm talking about Titan Way coming mm. down. That's where I find cars tend to go very fast. They've gotten off of uh, Broad Street, come around the roundabout, and it, you slant downhill and there's a curve, and it, they tend to go very fast. Um, so I, I was just wondering, would... I know it might impede the buses a little bit, <clears throat> but I think it might be a, a, a good thing for safety. Okay. I have one more question. Um, so Stantec would do the work uh, that we would have the contract with them or would you put it out to bid with? No, the Stantec is strictly a consultant. Okay, uh, so just, it, just it, to do the evaluation and the cost Just to do the estimates. evaluation. So the, the okay. city would bid the work out, again, probably through the engineering office. They do it every summer for the city's work for paving. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, so we're, we've already done quarterly credit card update. Uh, so we're gonna move on to fiscal year 2018 year-end financial results. Mr. Donovan. Okay, this is the last time you get this big spreadsheet till April, okay? <laughs> April or May, depends on what kind of shape I'm in by then. Um, so we won't go through all the detail, I just wanted to sort of give you the final summary. We're pretty much done. There is an audit, so there could be a couple audit entries and things, but for the most part, the last few years, there haven't been any uh, audit entries that would affect the bottom line. So, um, if you take a look on the back page, you see that first little box. Um, it starts with 110196 showing that that's remaining. But as we've talked about before, the FICA and the Medicare and the pension and the benefits, those are all 
put into our budget by the city. So if they overrun it, the city has to come up with the money. If they under spend, then they get to take that money back into the reserves. So basically the 110 is not the real number for us. The real number when you subtract out the net of all those is $5,000 for $5,046. So of a budget of a hundred and forty three million net that out let's say hundred and seven million which was our part we had five thousand dollars left and I think as I mentioned before to get to that five thousand number those three actions that where I have in the, the next box down where it says solution um, to get to the five thousand I was a negative prior to that I had to reverse out encumbrances of 25,000, which was fine anyway, I would have done that. So that's, I did it very late um, because I needed a little bit more information, but it, that should have been done anyway. So it's really, that's not that big a deal. I did have to take $50,000 and charge it to the special revenue fund that we use to pay for overruns on the out of district. Um, so that, sort of reserve account is 50,000 less than I hoped it would be at this point in time. And then I did use $200,000 um, of our retirement reserve. Our retirement reserve was only 275,000. I used 200,000 of that so that we could get to that $5,000 number. I mean, I was trying to get a zero number to be exact, but a little tricky to get to zero. Well, there's a lot of little moving pieces at the end. So the hope that I have is that we can rebuild the retirement reserve. Um, I am working with the city now. There is a meeting tonight, actually, of the aldermen. There's a possibility that over the next month, through what's called the escrow process, that we may get 200000 back. So if we do that, if that goes through and, and is approved by the aldermen, then we'll sort of get that, the, the, the value of that retirement reserve will go back up to the 275 number. Um, so I think we'll be, that will be comforting for me, um, especially even though we don't have tons of teachers retiring this year, we may next year. We've had lots of movement, movement at the uh, administrator level in the last couple of years. Um, so that reserve would be awful nice to have back. So all in all, like I said, this is the fourth year in a row. We're down, it's very, very close. You know, I think we were 13,000, we were 11,000, now we're five. This is the lowest it's been, and we actually had to hit reserves. So as we begin our budgeting process in early 2019, as I start putting the budget together, working with the superintendent, we'll, uh, try to make some changes to the budget so that it's not this close all the time and that we don't necessarily have to dip into reserves. The reality is reserves are there to cover times like this. So it's not a bad thing. It's good that we have them. And it's not a bad thing to use them once in a while, but you don't want to use them year after year because next thing you know, you don't have anything. So, uh, so that's the final update on 2018. Um, and uh, like I said, we'll worry about 2019 come next spring. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Um, and uh, I'm going to move on to fiscal year 2019 August transfer report. Yes. So we'll run through these quick. I think there's like four or five of them. Um, First one is, first one's more of a accounting slash coding issue. Um, we have two different accounts in our labor accounts. One is stipends and one is additional hours. When teachers do work outside of the contract to get paid $25 an hour, that's really additional hours. We want all those costs to go to that line item. Stipends are more for head teachers get stipends, uh, coaches get stipends. Um, so. The budget put together by the um, curriculum group, and they put what was additional hours into stipends. So we said, can you just move it to the right place? And hopefully it'll get charged to the right place. So it's just more of a, an accounting thing than anything else. Um, 
the next one, as the year began, um, a few things started coming up that we had did not have in the budget. So sometimes I have to make some early year entries. And even though you have all of, you have a, hardly any of the budget spent early on, <clears throat> most of the budget is in fact committed or sort of owned by somebody. And it's really tough to early on in the year go, oh, by the way, can I have $1,000 from you? Can I have $1,000 from you? Because the answer is going to be no. Um, and I, I, I have the, I guess, the right slash the power, whatever word you want to use, to go ahead and take some money from people, but I'd rather not do that. So what I did here was we had two needs. One was 5370 The planetarium that we have at the, high, the South High School, if you've ever been there, it's quite the... It's quite the, the thing, and there's a teacher there that deals with it. We also bring in a lot of our elementary and middle school students, and they come in and they use it. They run some classes out of there for the high school. But the projection, the projection, uh, the projectors and the whole process, it needed some updating. Um, it's kind of like your, your uh, HVAC system at home. You can't just leave it there for five years and hope nothing goes wrong. So we really needed to get it to work this year. We really needed another $5,000. We basically signed up with the local firm here called Skyscan. They'll come in, they'll review everything, and they'll, they'll make sure that it's in, in working order. So that, that was probably the best way to do it, was sort of a maintenance agreement. So I took money from the electricity account and moved it there so they can get that up and running. <clears throat> The other thing was miscellaneous equipment. Those are, once again, chairs for the high school, specifically, in this case, the South High School. Uh, Principal Richard came to me and said, Dan, you're going to start hearing a lot of it. We don't have enough chairs. We're using folding chairs. They don't last. You're going to start hearing from parents saying, my kid doesn't even have a chair. You got a $100 million budget. What are you doing? So he needed double this amount. So I said to him, okay, if you take half of it out of your allocation, I'll cover the other half. And we got him, got him a bunch more chairs. Um, I'm just waiting for Nate Burns to hear about this and do the same thing up here. <laughs> but um, hopefully he's got enough to, to get going. But that is something to have my eye on it. We'll take a look and we'll see how the year goes on. Maybe we can buy a few more during this year. We'll... We'll see what happens. Um, so basically, that's what that entry is, taking it out of the electricity, putting it into those two accounts for needs that we just had to start the school year. Um, <clears throat> the next one is Broad Street. It's simply moving. Uh, they took some of their, their allocated funds, and they're going to buy uh, round tables in the cafeteria. Um, if you go to Ledge Street, you'll notice they have all round tables. A lot of the uh, elementary schools like the round thing. There's less screaming and yelling, and it's just, I guess, a better environment for the, for the younger students. Um, and then the next one is, okay, the, the next one, when we put the budget together and we give schools allocations, we have a formula that we follow, and each school gets so much money. We also give additional amounts of money in that allocation to the schools that have um, the uh, preschool programs. So we do that, and we do that typically in December of each year, and then it goes through the whole budget, and then the preschool groups get together and say, oh, we're going to take this classroom and move it from one building to another. Or, you know, they're going to move some kids. So basically what we did here, I worked with the special ed group, and some of the money that was budgeted, so for example, um, uh, a, a program was moved from, from Bicentennial to Birch. So we took the funds that we had budgeted for that program and then just moved it over to Birch. So that's, that's all this is, is sort of giving a little bit of equity uh, to the school that has the program this year. Because when we had the budget, they were at one school, and then they get moved sometime during the summer. So that's really all that is. Um, we've had this, we, we've seemed to move around these programs fairly frequently. Um, not sure why, but we have. So I, I spoke to the principals and to the, uh, 
special ed people, I said, okay, let's take a look at it. We'll, we'll look at it again when we put the budget together, and then the, we'll take a look again in the spring. You know, and then maybe we can make this entry in, in advance. But um, Because the other thing that we do is we base it on the number of students in the program at the time. And especially for the preschool programs, they come in during the year because they come in as they age to that appropriate age. So at the end of the year, they may have, let's say, 15 kids in the program. We do the budget. They only have seven. So we only have signed enough funds for seven kids. And then to move the program, well, I have... I have 12, 13 kids. Well, how come you didn't give me enough money? Well, I can only give you what I have in the budget. So we'll work on that, make that a little better. It's not a huge amount of money, as you can see, but just to try to be fair to everybody. So those are the transfers. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. Um, um, questions, Ms. Mrs. Oden? Yes, I have a question. I know that we go through a lot of chairs at the high school are they looking to maybe find ones that might be a little bit more expensive that would last longer? Or are they continuing to get the same ones because that's still a better value, even though we're losing a lot of them? The ones they're getting now are sort of the hard, the, the thicker hard plastic. They've gone away from the more flexible ones okay. that might have been slightly more comfortable, but they break. Yep. Uh, these are pretty hard to break. You'd have to slam it on the ground to break it. Okay, thank you. They're not probably the most comfortable things in the world, but... 90 minutes. Mr. Moshe, do you have any questions or comments? No, we've uh, been going round and round about the, uh, the chairs for the past, uh, past three years. Mm -hmm. And I remember the, uh, the student uh, representatives that were... I uh, mentioning that, and uh, we just didn't have the wherewithal to do that at that time. So it's good to see that it is happening now. And to get the uh, the uh, more durable ones, I think, is a good idea. Uh, like you said, even though they may not be uh, as comfortable, but, hey, what are you going to do? Right. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mosher. Um, are you looking for a, a motion to approve the transfer report? Yes, I believe because we do have some that are over 5,000, so yes. Okay, I'm going to move to approve the fiscal year 2019 August transfer report. Second. Okay. On the motion, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Uh, Ms., Ms. Porter? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Motion carries three to zero. Okay. Next item is the fiscal year 2019 August financial report. Mr. Donovan. Okay, so I'm not going to run through every single line, obviously. It's only August, first two months of the year. Uh, as of this point, school had not started, um, but just starting on the salary and wages, which is our big piece. Um, you look down and you'll see that wages temporary seasonal to 51400. That's a fairly big number as percentage wise, but obviously that's the, the students, well, I think they're mostly young people that work this summer in the IT department and in the grounds department. So you'll, that number's higher in July and August than it is most of, most of the rest of the year. Um, you may now move to your fourth block class. Thank you. Okay, the next one down is 51600 longevity. I just note that because I'm like, well, we haven't paid any longevity. What happened? There was an error uh, payment. Someone was paid that amount. And I won't get into how it happened. It was kind of freaky. But we're looking into, it's more a system thing that just popped. So we'll be getting that money back. But that's why there's an amount there. Uh, the additional hours is significant now, but most of that is the summer school programs. That's where all those, everyone that works for us in the summer school programs, it goes to the additional hours. And uh, the stipends number, that's the head teachers because they get their payment throughout the school year. You'll see those numbers spike up when the coaches get paid. They get paid once a quarter. And uh, we talked before about retirement and separation pay. You can see month to date it was 269,000, which gives us already 392. 
The 269 number includes a, a number of the teachers. There's about half of the ones that, that we have on our list that, that are gonna collect their severance have been paid. We have about another half, and I did a quick run and said that's gonna be about $200,000. My guess is they will be submitting their paperwork. You'll see the rest of those come September. Occasionally, there's one or two that just take their time doing it, and the, the payment isn't made till then. Because we basically require the teacher to we make sure that they have all the paperwork in place before we pay them out the severance with the state. Um, so we should expect to see another 200,000. So that'll leave about 167 for the rest of the year. And we'll see who ends up leaving during the year. Typically, we don't have teachers leaving during the year, but we do have administrators sometime. I know we have an administrator up from one of the middle schools. That's going to hit next month, too. Um, so most of this will hit during the year, but keep in mind, it's, it's retirement money is the bulk of it, but it's also when people leave. If, let's say a custodian leaves in December for another job, they have some vacation time, and we pay them out the vacation time. That's going to hit here, too. So anytime someone leaves, um, whether they're sort of school-type people or not, the cost of that will go there. So other than that, the rest of those accounts are fine. Um, and then just running down when you, the fringe benefit will skip right over that area. The 53 professional technical services, not too much spent in there at this point. You will see under the encumbrance commitment columns, there's some big numbers under the instruction services, the 295,000, that's the non-sped clearway kids and the pupil support services, most of what's encumbered there is the OT and PT services. That's the bulk of that. So you'll see as the invoices come in, that encumbrance number goes down and the cost moves over into the expended column. Um, electricity and gas, like it's early on, the, the electricity is running higher because we had a very hot summer. So even though we didn't have a lot of people in, we we're still running the buildings and so I, I did take a look at it. it. It's higher than it was last summer, but it's still relatively a small piece at this point. Um, the next one, the property services on page two there. Um, the copier maintenance, you'll notice 78,000. We, we basically uh, pay half of it at the beginning of the year based on an estimate. We pay the other half, typically in January or February. And then um, we tie it up at the end of the year. So this year, they actually sent us the invoice a little late. Um, but the, in, the difference between what the estimate was and what the actual was was like 2,800 bucks. So fairly close. Um, I am going to, we'll, we'll get a report from our copier um, consultant soon and I'll then share that with the with the um, principles, I really may mainly look at, to try to look at the color copies. Some schools tend to use a lot more than others, and I just sort of say, for example, elementary schools, obviously Bicentennial is a lot bigger than Amherst Street, so you'd expect some more, but you wouldn't expect it to be six times more, and sometimes you'll see that, so I'll sort of reach out and say, hey, can you keep an eye on the color copies, since they cost about five times more than the black and white. Um, so that's okay. Um, and if you down in other services, uh, under the regular transportation, that's a negative number. I'm saying why would that be a negative number? And uh, that was just somebody charged an invoice to that account. Then they realized it was the wrong account. So they, they're doing an AP correction. So it's that will disappear next month. It's just the negative, the change went through, the invoice went through last month, the change went through this month, and so as you can see, year to date, it's fine. And uh, the only other thing on the last page, well, page three there, um, if you take a look down, month to date expended, the books, it was 162,000, so I just took a look to say, okay, what books did we buy? About 68,000 was biology physics books. Uh, we bought some science books at the elementary schools, about, I mean the middle school, sorry, about 24,000. 
And then there was uh, some Eureka math purchases of about 65,000. So that's the bulk of what that is. Um, that, that account obviously is, you would expect to buy the books early in the year instead of the end of the year. It won't do you much good come May. Um, and other than that, uh, you know, we're only 10.96% spend year to date, and that's, that's just due to the fact that most of our money's in labor, and most of the labor didn't start until September. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Donovan, um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Mr. Mosher? No, I have done. A, uh, everything uh, seems to be, uh, you know, where it's supposed to be, so... I'm happy. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Donovan. I believe that was the last item on our agenda. So I'm going to entertain uh, a, a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Okay. I'll second. second. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mosher. Um, on the motion to adjourn, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Porter? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion carries. Um, this meeting is adjourned at 7.29 p.m.